But I want to talk to you about this morning a message, a prophetic word. I need for you to really hear it called releasing the power of change. Releasing the power of change. And we use it as a subtitle this morning, Believe and Speak. Releasing the power of change. How many know that every one of us in some area in our life need changing? There, there, there's a change that need to take place in this nation. There's a change that need to take place in our country. There is a change. I mean, all of us can go through our lives and look at the many different things that need to be changed. Notice what I notice what we said, that need to be changed. But how many of you know that there is a power that is in you for already change? I said there's a power that is already in you for change. And so we're going to talk about that this morning. We're going to deal with that this morning because we're not going to no longer look at what need to be changed, but we're about to be the voice of change. Good God Almighty. Shout, I am the voice of change. Come on, testify, I'm the voice of change. So from this day forward, nobody better not come to you asking you to uh, pray with them about something that needs to be changed. Because you're going to be the voice to change. Hallelujah. So let's get into this this morning. Praise God, and I'm so excited about it. In Ephesians chapter 3, look at verse 20. He said, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to what the power that worketh in us according to God is able to do what is he able to do God is able to do ex God 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 shout God, shout God shout God God is able, so, so forgive me if I do a lot of preaching this morning because I feel like that, I mean, I, I'm, I'm stirred up. God is able. He's not telling you to be able. God is able. He's not telling you to, God is able. What is God is able to do? God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. Shout, God can do it. Shout, there is no limitation. The only limitation is my imagination. The only limitation that takes place in our life is our, can you believe it? Can you dream it? Can you see it? Because if you can dream it, see it, believe it, God will do the performing. Let me say it again. If you can see it, believe it, and dream it, God will do the performing. Come on, shout with me. If I can see it, believe it, dream it, God would do the performing. God, come on, would do the performing. One more time. I got to get you to understand that because what God, the only thing God is asking us to do, he's asking us to be able to believe it. He's asking us to be able to see it. He asked us if we can be able to dream it. He said, now, if you can just do those three, I will be the one who doing the performing of it. Glory to God. We talk about releasing the power of change. Now, let's go a little bit further here. If you will, go, if, if you will, in your Bibles in the book of, uh, where, where, where was I? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Where was the next one you told me to go? Romans chapter one. That's what it was. Romans chapter one. Romans chapter one. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Believe Romans chapter 1. Watch this here. In Romans chapter 1 verse 16 we're talking about releasing the power of change. In Romans chapter 1 look at verse 16. He said for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For, he said for it is what? The power of God Unto salvation to everyone that believed, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now here the Apostle Paul said, now, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Talking about the gospel meaning the good news, the word of God. He said, I'm not ashamed of it. I need for you to hear this. He said, now, I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not ashamed of it. Why? He said, because it is the power of God. And it is the power of God unto salvation 
to everyone that believes. In other words, if a person believes that this word is power, the person that believes the power in this word will be the person who will experience the power of it. The person that believes in the power of this word will be the person that will experience the power of it. So the Apostle Paul said, I'm not ashamed of it. So I can't be ashamed of this thing. As we, as we moved on to this message, I got to get you to see something. Because when you're ashamed of something, you won't talk about it. When you're ashamed of something, you know, you kind of hesitate for how you interact with it. The Apostle Paul said, I'm not ashamed of it. Because it is the power of God. My, matter of fact, I'm removing all shame. I'm removing all shame of the kingdom of God off anybody's minds. And somebody may say, well, Pastor, I'm not ashamed. Well, can you talk about it in the face of people who don't want to hear it? Uh, can, can you vocally stand up and say, I know my God is my provider to people who don't even believe in your God? Can, can you stand? I, I'm talking about even down to the point of say, you know what? I'm standing with my man and woman of God. I don't care how it looked, what it seemed, what it appeared. No, no, I, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Don't tell me you don't believe. Well, your unbelief ain't going to change what I believe. I know he's my source. I know he's a way maker. I know, I know he's my son and shield. I know he will increase me more and more. I know I have favor with God and man. I don't care what's going on in the economy. The economy don't take care of me. God take care of me. And I'll stand up and I'll shout it to the world that the job ain't my source. The job is a source, but it's not my source. God is my source. Thank God for the job, but the job don't take care of me like my God can. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God. Hallelujah. Oh boy, don't, don't, don't y'all, I'm already. Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 1. We're about to get radical. I said we're about to get radical. We're about to shake up this city. Anybody who's watching by streaming, if you want to keep watching us at 1217 East Green, you keep watching us. We're about to shake up this Piedmont Triad. We're about to shake up everything that's been in darkness. We're about to shake up anything that's been broken. We're about to mend it together. We're about to extreme. We're about to bring the kingdom of God right here in this city. Hallelujah. No devil in hell will be able to stand up against us. No demon will be able to come in our sight. No spirit will be able to be around us. No, because we're about to run every demon out of every household. We're about to run every demon out of other city. We're about to run every demon out of people's lives. We're not going to sit around and talk about problems and what need to be done. No, we're the voice of change. I said, we're the voice of change. Look at Acts chapter 1. So we see already that the gospel is the power. Now look at Acts chapter 1 right quick and look at verse 3. He said, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them. He commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. But what, what he told them to what? Wait for the promise. Shout wait. That word wait means to be confident expectation of good. Shout I'm waiting for it. But now notice what the definition of wait means. Confident expectation of good. So whatever I'm waiting on, there is a confidence I have and an expectation that I have that I'm going to get what I'm waiting for. So when I say I'm waiting, I'm not waiting, murmuring and complaining. When I say I'm waiting, I'm not waiting and talking negative. No, when, I'm, when I say I'm waiting, I'm waiting with an confident expectation for that good to come. I have a posture and a position that I'm looking for it. I know it's coming. So I got myself in a posture and I got myself in a position. I know the arrival is coming soon. So I'm looking for it. I got my mind on it. I got, I, I got myself in a position. It's got to come. Watch this here. Wait for the promise. 
You be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days since. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said unto them, watch this. Now, I need for you to see this. Now, watch this here. All, all the life-changing Bible uh, students, watch this here. Man, that came out my spirit. So, excuse me right now. This is a personal moment, so I call that school in. That leadership school I've always, I'm calling in. Matter of fact, while I'm calling that school, and I, let me just go call in our new building, our new sanctuary. I call in that children's building. I call in that 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 that, that restaurant. I call in that barber and beauty salon. I call in. I call in. I call in everything that you showed me in 1997. I call you to come in, and in the name of Jesus, I bind and I break every influence, every invisible force been holding my vision back. And in Jesus' name. I I loose you and you come to me now in Jesus name do I have any witness in here how far somebody say I'm in agreement with the man of God now you can't be in agreement and not your vision show up I said you can't be in agreement with the vision of the house and your vision don't show up so get ready for your vision I don't know who you've been waiting for something to come but I want you to know you got to look, have an expectation of what's about to come. Hallelujah. Watch this here. You say, what's, oh man, what's going on with Pastor this morning? I'm going to tell you what's going on. In prayer last week, I was sick and I said, God, I said, there's a lot of things going on. What, what, what happened? What's going on? He said, son, my people has got to become a better strategist. He said, the devil have a strategy of afflicting and affecting their life. He said, but my people I don't have a strategy. They just going through the motion and not seeking me for directions and guidance on what they need to shift and move in. He said, now is a time, he said, and there are some things, some trouble comes to shift you. Every trouble that comes is not to destroy you. The devil thinks it's going to destroy you, but God, how many know God got you? No matter what the devil throw at you, God still got you. God will never let you be allowed to be overtaken by the enemy. So what God says, some things that come, that he allowed to come, is to get you to shift. Because you got too comfortable where you were. And there are some things he have to allow to shift you so you can get back focused like you was. So you can hear the next move. Shout, it's next move time now. Check us. You move. They move. But what, what they don't understand is you still going to win. You still going to win. You may feel like you blocked me at the moment. But what you don't know, that one's going to have to move. And I got to jump over you to get to where I'm going. And God has got some of you right now jumping over stuff. You don't know what. At things is uncomfortable because he got me jumping over stuff. Stuff used to upset me. Don't upset me no more. Things used to bother me. Don't, upset, don't bother me no more. Why? I'm jumping over because there is a place he's bringing me into. Watch this here. We're talking about releasing the power of change. Watch this here. He said, but you shall receive power. Let me read verse 7 again. Because there's something about verse, verse 7 I got to get you to see. Watch this in verse 7. Y'all ready to go? In verse 7, watch the verse 7 again. He said unto them, it is not for you to know. Know what? The times. Or the seasons. One thing that can frustrate us is we're trying to know something that we don't need to know. Yeah. 
because that will get me to move beyond before my season. He said, it's not, it's not meant for you to know the times or the seasons that the father has put in his own hand. There are some things he don't want you to know. There are some things he'll keep hidden from you. So it'll get you to keep just trusting him. He said, but this one thing you should know is this. It's not meant for you to know the times or the seasons, but know this. You shall receive power, though. That's the only thing you need. There's a power that's already in you. There's a power that is available to you. Now, that word power also means the ability to get results. In other words, there is an ability that is already equipped on the inside of you to get the results you need in its time. But if I get so locked in on times and seasons, I'll allow that to talk me out of the season I'm in. The season you're in right now, listen to me, saints of God, the season you're in right now is the season you need to be in. Now, it's what I do in this season that's going to determine my next season. So instead of me trying to get to my next season, let me take full advantage of the season I'm in. Let me learn about the season I'm in. Let me get understanding in the season I'm in. Let me learn how to walk with God in the season that I'm in. Let me learn how to pray better in the season I'm in. Let me challenge myself to become better in the season that I'm in. Let me, let me, let me pray longer in the season that I'm in. Let me walk in love in the season that I'm in. Let me let things go in the season that I'm in. Let me have a new mindset in the season that I'm in. So when the next season come I've already sowed the seed for the harvest of my next season are you with me here shout power to change now go to 2nd Peter right quick 2nd Peter 2nd Peter the power to change I'm so excited, man. I am. Because I know this word right now is changing lives. In 2 Peter chapter 1, right quick, watch this here. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Look at verse 3. According as his what? His divine power. What has his divine power done? Hath given unto us what? Oh, come on, saints of God. His power has given us what? His power has given us. His power. His power. His power have given us what? All things what? That pertain unto life and godliness. According as his power has given unto you and I All things, everything that you and I would ever need to live a life pleasing to God. He said, I've already given it to you. Everything that you will need in life, shout in life. life. Say it again. Now, I need for you to see that. He said, I have given you everything that you would need. That you would need. Now, your needs today are different than your needs was two years ago. But watch this. Didn't your needs get met two years ago? Didn't your needs get met two years ago? Didn't your needs get met five years ago? Now, your needs today is a whole lot different than your needs was five years ago. But guess what? Aren't your needs still being met today? So it don't matter. Watch this. Now, ask again. It don't matter what season that you're in. You already have a need meter in you. So no matter what, what, what will you ever have need of? Now watch this. That's the first thing the devil try to throw at you. Well, how are you going to do something when you do that? They try to make you think you won't have what you need when you get to that place. When he said, I've already given you everything that you will ever need. 
So fear can talk me out of the promises of God. Fear. I, I mean, I love the acronym people used to hear. You don't hardly hear it no more. False evidence appearing real. A false image of something. Trying to make you think what you can't do when in reality you can. Trying to make you think that you can't uh, accomplish when in reality you already have. So fear will always try to make, try to put you in this, this box that says it can't be done. But God said, it ain't about if it can't be done. It's already done. It's already done. Shout, it's already done. Everything that pertains to life and godliness is already done. Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross, when he shed his blood, and when Jesus went to the depth of hell, and when Jesus rose from the dead, he said, now, all power, Matthew 28, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me. Shout, I already got it. Now, go, if you will, in the book of Ezekiel. Here we go. I'm not going to hold you. Ezekiel 37. Because we're talking about releasing the power of change. What this message today is designed to do, Ezekiel 37, this message is designed to, to do is to take me and you and all of those who are watching by streaming and anyone who will ever hear this message is going to shift you to a place to say, to start looking at things. Wait a minute. That's already changing. I'm releasing the power to change that. I'm not going to lo no longer talk about or have on my mind what need to be changed. No. If I recognize the need, then I already know I have the power with the seed to change it. Look at Ephesians 37. Ephesians chapter 37. Look at verse 1. Ephesians chapter, no, I said Ephesians, Ezekiel. I, Pastor, calm down. <laughs> calm down. Y'all know I'm out there, so. Thank y'all for loving me in spite of. Ezekiel 37. Look at verse 1. And the hand of the Lord was upon me. Carry me in the spirit of the Lord. Set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. He said the spirit took me and it took me in the spirit and it put me right there smack in the middle of a valley that was full of bones. Isn't it interesting sometimes that we can find ourselves in the middle of something that need to be changed. Watch this here. I'm going to help change your mindset today. Say, 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 say it again. Oh boy. Watch this. Watch this. Watch these things. Some things that God set you in that need to be changed it's not for that, those things to change you. It's for you to change it. Some things are not changing because you are expecting change from places you're supposed to change. Oh, let me say it again. Some things are not changing because you are expecting things to change from places that you are supposed to change. So now you're looking to get something that can't give you what you're supposed to give it. Because you are the difference maker. You are the change maker. You're the one that's going to make all the difference. And I'm not doing it. I'm, I'm not getting the difference because you are the difference. And I, don't, I didn't know I was the difference. Because if I would have known I was the difference, I would have made a difference a long time ago. But I thought they was the difference. But now I'm here to let you know it ain't they, it's you. Shout, God has, God has anointed me to be the difference maker. Now, let, let me caution you because as a difference maker, you got to take stuff everybody else don't have to take. As the difference maker, you got to go through stuff everybody else may not have to go through. As a difference maker, it just seems like life is unfair. It, as a difference maker, it just seems like everybody else can go out, have a good time, but you got to stay in the house. It, it seems like when you're a difference maker, everybody can just do whatever they want to do, but I can't do 
nothing. Why? You are a difference maker and a difference maker have a strict lifestyle. They can't do what everybody else do. You will be picked on. You'll be laughed at. You can't hang out with the crowd because when you are a difference maker, God is setting you up and preparing you not just to change your house, but to change your city. Hallelujah, somebody. Shout out, I'm a difference maker. Watch this. He set them in the midst of the valley of bones. Watch this here. Watch this. He set them in the midst. He sat them right in the middle of it. And caused me to pass by them round about. Watch this. They were very many in the open valley, and they were very dry. He's now in this position where he's seeing all this stuff. Watch this. God is, God is letting him see it. There are some things God will let you see. Not to talk about, criticize, or down, but for you to change it. There are some things God will give you an open vision on that he won't give everybody else. There are some things God will let you see that everybody's going to be able to see. Come on, talk to me, Pastor. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. See, this is your next level right here. This is your next level right here. So I got to now begin to realize that everything I see is not for everybody to hear. Everything I hear, everything I see is not for everyone else. Some things God allow me to see because I'm the one he's looking to to change it. This year. He brought him there. And he said, In the Son of Man, he asked them a question. Son of Man, can these bones live? And I answered, Oh Lord, thou knowest. In other words, like, God, why are you asking me if they can live or not? God, why are you asking me? You know it. You God. You missed that. You missed that. I need for you to see this. God, I, why are you asking me if they live? You God, you know. Because there are some things God said, yeah, I know I can change it, but I need you to be my voice. Who should I tell Pharaoh that sent me? Tell Pharaoh that I am sent you. But I can't speak. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm on slow time. I, I start. I'm a man of slow time. I can't speak. Okay, well then, you know what? Don't worry about that. I'm going to use your tongue. But get Aaron, your brother, he'll speak for you. In other words, because Moses, you're the one that is equipped to change it. Good God Almighty. Watch this here. And he said unto me, notice this, we get ready to close. And he said unto me, watch this, prophesy upon these bones and say, Watch this. Unto them. Prophesy to the bones. Notice. He said now, prophesy to the bones. Speak life into the bones and say unto them. Not the condition, not the valley, but to the bone. Not the ground, but to the bone. Not what you see, but to the bone. Prophesy to the bone. And watch the what he tell him. Now watch what he tell him. Watch what he told him. Watch what he told him here. He said, he said, he said unto them, Oh, ye dry bones, hear, hear what? The word of the Lord. He's talking to bones. Now, bones are scattered everywhere. But now see this picture. Bones are scattered everywhere. And God is giving him instructions. Shout instructions. Come on, say it again. Because if you're going to be the change maker, you, the only way you can really be the change maker, you got to know how to follow instructions. You got to know how to follow. You got to know how to hear and keep moving. You got to know how to keep yourself in a posture and a position that God is telling you, but I'm still moving. Hear you the word of the Lord, you dry bones. Watch this. Thus said the Lord God unto these bones, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. Notice how, notice how he's speaking now. 
He's prophesying. He's talking directly to the bones and he's saying exactly to the bones what's going to happen. He's prophesying to the bones. He's saying exactly to the bones what's going to happen. Just like Pastor Anthony Stevenson is prophesying to you this morning. And I'm saying exactly what's about to take place in your life. The first thing that is about to happen is everything that's dead is about to come alive. Everything that needs to be turned and changed, there is an anointing and an empowerment from the Holy Ghost coming through your men of God this morning, breathing life on every last one of you right now that however you came you won't leave the same way you came. Matter of fact those who are watching by streaming there is an anointing in your house right now I don't know who I'm talking to but somebody in the kitchen is praising God. Yes you're praising God because this is the word you've been waiting on and because you have been waiting God has now sent the word and when he sees the word he healed, he delivered, he set free. I'm announcing this morning there is a healing in the house. Healing of the soul, healing of the mind, healing of the emotion. I find somebody tell I'm getting mine, I'm getting mine, I'm getting mine. Ah, uh -huh, the devil lost. The devil lost. Thank you, men of God. Thank you. Thank you. The devil lost. Oh my, thank you, men of God. The devil lost. I got my second win now. I can see through the smoke screen what he was trying to do. But God, I thank you for loving me enough that you didn't allow me to step into that mess. But you guarded me. You protected me. And because my man of God, he loved me. God loved me. You sent a word. And that word is manifesting in my flesh. Hallelujah, somebody. I'm trying, my God. I'm trying. He tried to rob you of your joy. I don't know who it is, but I keep hearing joy. Your joy was messed with. He trying to rob you of your joy. He trying to rob you of your joy. I don't know who it is who have been fighting with joy. And it just seems like the enemy just going to rob you of your joy. You ain't been murmuring. You ain't complaining. But just for some reason, it just seemed like your joy was being smothered. But I'm here to announce to you today that was a sent attack. That was a strategy because the devil knows there is something about joy that breaks the power of the enemy. I don't know who you are, but you got to have joy by faith. And sometimes you just got to shout, God, I thank you. I love you. I'm so happy. I'm just so happy. Praise be unto God. Why? Because I am releasing the power of change. And I'm going to finish preaching this too. Everything that's trying to hit my body right now, I'm still going to preach it. I'm still getting this thing out because the devil should know by now. When you touch me, I'm going to preach even harder. If you mess with me, I'm going to preach even harder. You want to try to put all this on my body? Now I'm going to preach even harder. He said, watch this as we close. Watch, I got to finish reading this. I'm going to try. Releasing the power of change. You are the change maker. You've been putting up with stuff you ain't even had to put up with. When death and life is in the power of your tongue. And the thing about it, you already know how to speak. You already know what to say. But every once in a while, we all just need a reminder. Just need a reminder of what we already know. And that's what we're here for, to remind one another that you're already more than a conqueror. 
to remind one another that you are the head and not the tail. To remind one another that you are blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when you come and blessed when you go. You are just a reminder to remind you, just like you spoke the demons then, you speak to that demon right now. Watch this here. He said, verse, verse 5 again. Oh, I'm trying to get through this. Thus said the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath. To enter into you and you shall live. I will lay snooze upon you and will bring up flesh upon you. He's saying all this. He's saying all this. And will cover you with skin and will put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. God, these are the instructions that God has given the prophet. He's telling him to say this stuff. He's telling him to say it. Because God is going to work through his words. Just like God is going to work through his words, God is working through your words right now, even as you speak. Watch this here. Look at, look at, look at verse 7. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking came. See, there's a shaking. See, there's that shaking. See, all shakings is not bad. See, you got to realize sometimes, sometimes a shaking will bring up stuff that you didn't know it was there. A shaking is good, but shaking can also bring some stuff up that you didn't even know was already laying there. And a noise was abroad. A shaking took place. Watch this here. Watch this here. My God. And the, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the snooze and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above. But there was no breath in them. So something was still missing. Something was still missing even after he obeyed. Something was still missing. Isn't it interesting that after you obey, see like something's still missing? Watch this. That's because you only did one half. So when I recognize what's missing, I got to go back and find out what else I need to say for the second half. So that don't mean that God didn't hear me. That don't mean that something ain't wrong. Something's wrong. No, that just means I did one half of the promise. That's why, man, church is so vital, folks. You can't get this revelation sitting around eating Popeye's chicken. <laughs> Pastor, why are you always using chicken? I don't know. <laughs> no, it's going to cost you to learn this. I got to know this. Saints of God, if I'm going to experience the depthness of God, the depthness of God never comes easy. The depthness of God never comes as a silver spoon on a platter. The depthness of God will always cause you to dig. And you're going to have to dig deeper than everyone else. It's a treasure. Are you seeing this here? So something else is missing. No breath was in them. Verse 9 as we get ready to close. Then said he unto me, watch this, prophesy to the wind. Now, did you see that? He's telling him to do something different than what he told him before. That's why I got to have my ears open to hear what he's telling. Because that's why the shifting and the shaking could be important because I got to do something different in this season than I did in the previous season. Because this is the second half of my coming blessing. So he's telling him now, prophesy to the wind now. Because the wind is what's going to bring the breath. I told you to prophesy to the bones first. And, the, and you prophesying to the bones did its job. It, it covered them. It skinned them. It did everything it was supposed to do. Now the bone can't produce the wind. So I need I, the breath, I mean. So I need the wind to produce the breath. But how many know only God knows stuff like that? Oh, come on. How, how many know how, you, you can't think of that? Your education can't think on that level. 
I don't care how much you know. You can't think on that level. That's why you got to go to God because God got things in secret places. He know how to get you hooked up to stuff that can't be seen in the natural eye. So me listening to God, me coming to hear his word, it's not about being spiritual. It's not about me trying to act like I know more scriptures than anybody else. No, I understand that he's the God of secrets and he know what I can't see. He know where to take me where I don't know where to go myself. He know how, he know how to take me to get answers that can't no man give me. Prophesy to the wind. Prophesy to the wind. Prophesy to the wind and say the Lord God come from the four winds O oh, breath upon them, these slain. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came unto them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried, and our hope is lost, and we are cut off from our parts. In other words, he said, they say, the they, they say, they said you couldn't make it. They said you weren't going to last. They said give you a little bit of time. They said they're going to be cut off. They said those bones are dry and they can't live. He said, but, but what, what do you say? What do you say? Because if you say what I say, what they say don't mean no difference. They said the, dry, the bones can't live. But now we got standing in front of me, bones living. Why? The process of change was released through the mouth of a man who believed and spoke what God said. That man that believed and spoke what God said got results he couldn't get no other way. This is what God is telling you and I today. That God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or think. But he need for you to believe and speak what he tell you to believe and speak and watch him do the performance. Come on, stand with me. 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 There shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. Nothing change changes without change. If there will be any change in any of our lives, it will come as a result of a change we make. And the change that we make is not always being made in the fullness. Folks, I believe the God that we serve, if he see the, the, the step of the initial trying to change is something about God, man. When you try, at least try. Lord, if it's you bid me to come, Peter stepped out on that water, began to go to Jesus. But then the storm rose. And he began to look at the storm. And as he began to look at the storm and the rain and the wind and the waging, all them, the Bible said he began, he began, he began, he began, he began to sink. But he couldn't get, he, he, he couldn't, the water couldn't get past his ankle. Jesus had already had his hand. Pulling him with him. Why? God is trying to teach and tell all of us. Don't be afraid to take steps. Don't be afraid to step out in unknown places that don't seem uncomfortable. Because if you just trust him enough to take a step, he's guaranteed to hold you up. He will hold you up no matter what. He will hold you up. And that's something you need to know today. It ain't all of us. All, every one of us in here right now, people look at preachers and Man, we all have to still keep doing this because none of us have arrived. I know I haven't. The day I arrive is when I stand before him. And he said, well done, that good and faithful servant. 
But until then, I'm still working. Until then, I'm still learning. Until then, I'm still doing the best I can do without a conscience of condemnation. So I don't even know who it is today, but somebody been beating yourself upside the head. Somebody been condemning yourself. And you ain't, don't do that. Don't you do that at all. I don't care what's going on in your life. Don't you do that? Because we all are moving forward. We all are striving. We all are believing God to become better. This is what Jesus died for. Releasing the power of change. Every change is in you. Every change you want to see is in you. Every change you will see is in you. You are the prophet to your life. Come on, give Jesus the best praise you can give him for that. While you're standing, if there's one this morning that's not born again, that's not saved, and you never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, and you said, Pastor Stevenson, that's me. I've been wanting to get my life together, Pastor, but I don't, I don't know if I'm ready or not. Many people are faced with that. Many people want it, but they're faced with thinking they're, they, they're supposed to be a certain way. No, man. Folks, that, we got to let people know only God can perfect that which concerns you. We got to let people know that. We got to let people know, man, come to him just as you are. And allow him. Man, you lived a certain way for years. That ain't going to change overnight. But what will help it change is people that love you. That surround you. And watch this and let you be you. To bring them into that place of change. And that's what life changing is all about. That's what this ministry is all about. I brag on y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, we brag on y'all. And I, and I tell people, I tell people, every time I meet strangers, I tell them, I invite them to the church. And I tell them, now, don't, don't, don't get deceived by the nice cars and the, and, and, and the nice, and the, the, how people look dressed. I said, because there's some testimonies up in there, Jack. Don't, don't let those things deceive you. Don't, don't let those things throw you off. It's testimonies after testimonies. We bring some people and put them online and let y'all hear some of y'all testimonies. It'll blow folks' mind where you came from. But it's, a, it's, it's an example of the power of Jesus Christ and the change he want to bring in all of our lives. Praise God. Can you just take a minute and just lift your hands and just worship God for just for a minute? There's such a wonderful presence in here right now. There's such a sweet, sweet presence in here. And even those who watch it by streaming, if you would just join us here in the sanctuary because there is an anointing right now in this sanctuary. There is the, pre the presence of God is in this sanctuary right now. And I believe, I believe without a shadow of a doubt, every one of you who are watching by streaming, if you would just lift your hands with this congregation, that the same thing that is going on here in this congregation will go on right there in your house, in your car, hospital, nursery home, wherever you are, that the hand of Jesus is going to touch you today like he's touching the people in this sanctuary right now. I believe, Father, and I prophesy over every person under the sound of my voice. Every chain has been broken. Every crooked place has been made straight. Every wrong has been made right. May your peace that passes all understanding shall keep their hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Lord, let, every, let everything they have need of, let, let the desire, let it be manifested. Lord, remind them of what you have put in their hearts to do from the very beginning. Father, we thank you that your word is already working. Angels are already moving. The Holy Spirit is already working. Demons have already been removed. Strongholds have already been broken. Minds have already been renewed. Hearts have already been restored. Families have already been restored back together. Children are already on their way back home. Lives have already been changing. Father, we thank you that right now that favor is already gone before every person under the sound of my voice. And Father, we thank you for your mighty hand, your mighty presence that is resting on every household. And we give you praise for it now. In Jesus' name.
name. Praise God.